and so far I said no. What is it? Is it a no? Uh huh. Um, like, can they lift him out of the cage, put him, let's say they make an obstacle course for him to play yeah. around? For it. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, you understand your question? Let's, let's, let's begin by saying there are definitely some post schemes to rely on who hold that pets in our days are non mutsa even though we do learn in, in the mainly in the Rosh and the Orzarua who discuss the question of animals being Muktzeh, they concluded that animals are Muktzeh. But back in the days of the Rosh, we're talking about times where these Jews didn't have pets in their homes. It wasn't something very uh, frequent. <coughs> by the way, their specific example is Tzipore Shir. They're talking about um, uh, birds that chirp make nice sounds and people used to have them in their house for, for making it more lively and, ha and happy in the home. So it was some type of pet, but it wasn't really like we have today where have dogs or cats or guinea pigs that uh, uh, we really play with and really part of, the, of our life by much. So some posts came in our days, like for example, Rabbi Eliezer Melamed in the Pnine Alacha, he decided that in our days, it's totally different situation and we do not regard a, a pet animals as, as moktzeh. But make sure, this is only true if it's a pet animal which we domestically rear and, uh, and have living in our home, but not any cat or dog you see in the street. That's, that would still be moktzeh. Uh, and, and, or any other... <clears throat> animal that we don't uh, have in our home and, and, and live with. Like a cow or whatever, a horse. Those are definitely muktze even in our days. But, hi, good evening. But, uh, <coughs> so that's one opinion. There is a, there is such an understanding in Moshe Feinstein's work even, and he goes, Moshe, who also may be of that opinion, not so sure. It depends how you learn it and the two different shuvot, not so sure. Majority of post schemes still hold, like Bashal Muzamin and others, that pets are muktzeh nowadays. But even according to them, there's one leniency, and that is if you're the owner and your kids are considered the owner, meaning the one that's they're, they're the ones that meant to, that are meant to take care of, of the I don't touch it. Oh, <laughs> I do touch not it. touch it. <laughs> they take care of it fully. <laughs> fully they take care of. It. Okay, great. So it's even more. Their mission. Uh, uh, so the uh, so here, the leniency would be, if it's not just for their sake, for the kids' sake, they they enjoy uh, dealing and touching it and playing with it and all that. It's also for the pet's sake. They tell me that we don't have a pet at home, but they tell me that um, they need they the animal itself needs. Uh, touching and, 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 and uh, um, patting. Uh, it, it needs it for, 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 for its uh, nurturing, sort of. Uh, <coughs> I don't know what type of emotions that animals have, but it definitely is something that they, they're pleased with. So since the animal needs it, then, and, 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 and again, only if it's the owner who is in charge of the animal and, and has to take care of it. So if this is part of the taking care of the animal, then it's okay. That's based on the fact that the Gemara says, uh, animal that's mizonota valecha, you're allowed to treat it. If, if, if you're in charge of feeding it, so you're allowed to feed it, you're allowed to, again, take care of it in a way that's necessary for the animal to, uh, to um, grow uh, properly. So that's a leniency that we can help you out with or your kids uh, with. But again, if they have, let's say, friends that come over for Shabbat, uh, neighbors, thing, people aren't in charge of it, they definitely should not be touching the pets, which would make it quite confusing, uh, I assume, for your children and for, the, and for the guest kids. Is that with a dog also? Like if there's a dog walking around, your guest can take his home and there's a dog walking around. Correct. You, you should not touch be it. touching it. No. If you just touch muktzeh, that's allowed. You mustn't move it. But 
almost every animal, when you come to touch it, it moves. Right. Almost every animal. So you can't really touch it. Also, some posts can talk about, speak about the hair of the animal. When you right. pet it, right. so when you pat it, the hair moves. So that, that's, even, that's even considered moving more consent. So if you're a guest at someone's home, you should refrain from touching any pet that's in that home. Uh, yep, only, only the owner can take care of the animal in a way that the animal needs caring. <coughs> okay, so that's for that. So I hope this can help them out. But if it's really, really, really only for their own sake, your kid's sake, just for them to enjoy, then even if they're the owner, it's not simple, but there we can rely on those post who allow in general to touch pets, like Malamed and maybe Ramosha Feinstein, definitely a po big post scheme. So I would say at least for your children, it could be okay. It should be okay to touch, but not for anyone, not strangers that come in and that aren't uh, in charge of the animal. Okay, uh, let's continue with our uh, chapter here in the midst of chapter 22 in the book, which discusses electrical appliances of, of sort on Shabbat. Okay, now, um, there's a short, a short discussion on uh, Shabbos elevators. I won't go into too much details on a Shabbos elevator. In general, we know that one mustn't use a regular ele elevator on Shabbat, even, even if he's not pressing or she's not pressing the button to get to the floor that they're, they're, they would wish to get to, because the mere fact that you're standing inside the elevator causes some effect, has some effect on the electricity. It needs to lift more uh, weight, uh, or, or even, even more so, by the way, more so going down. It's, 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 it's interesting, this point, that going down in an elevator, I'm talking about a non-Shabbos elevator, non-Shabbos elevator, going down in an elevator is worse than going up. So if you have a guy pressing the button anyhow, he's going to his floor, going up to his floor, going down to the lobby, and you join the ride, so going down is worse than going up, which makes the dafka easier for us, because usually we need the elevator more desperately walking up. Down is not so difficult, even if it's 12 flights. You run down the stairs, good exercise. But going up 12 flights isn't a great uh, onyx Shabbos, I would say. Doesn't fit uh, uh, the atmosphere of Shabbat to walk up 12 flights. So it is more lenient to go up in, in a regular functioning, regular elevator, not Shabbos. When the guy pressed the button, not for you, he pressed it for himself, it's more lenient to go up than going down. Why? Because the elevator needs anyway to lift itself up 12 flights. So that's very heavy. There's not much of an addition for another person who's inside. Going down it needs to make sure it doesn't drop. Right. It has to stop. It has to go slowly. So that may have a stronger effect on the fact that your weight is in there than up. That's how the post scheme, uh, I mean, they've looked this up uh, in, with the help of engineer, engineers who explained this to them. And that's what they came to a conclusion. So if you're desperate, desperate, and there's no Shabbos elevator, and you have to get up to a very high floor, and there's a guy that's going up anyhow, and you go up to the floor that he needs, and then you walk up or down the stairs if it's not the floor you need, going up is, in desperate cases, Shabbat Chak is okay. Going down, definitely not. New York, like when the doorman knows you, that's what Not good. Are I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I, I, I was told that the in, in, in the like the, press, press right, he knows who, which, which floor you are. He presses it for you. Not no, allowed no, at, no, all. No. at no, all. At all, at all, at oh. all. That's, that has nothing to do with electricity, per se. Lots of modern Orthodox yeah. people I know. have a I know. are not aware. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard. I know, I know. When we get to the chapter of Amir Aleak, who's using a goy for doing all things for us on Shabbat, we'll see how... Uh, how problematic that is. It's very problematic. It doesn't work. Because any, anything a goy does for a Jew on Shabbat, specifically for the Jew, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need to for the elevator to go to the 30th floor. He's staying put in the lobby. Anything a goy does for a Jew, no matter if you told him to or not, even if he does it on his own. He sees it's dark in some room. He comes in and turns on a light because he sees you're in the room and it's dark. He can't benefit from it anymore. 
because it's two separate things. Asking to do something is amira, benefiting is hana'a. Two separate things, and they're both prohibited on Shabbat. So you can't benefit from something that God does for you. It takes away a lot, a lot of the use we can have from a non-Jew on Shabbat. So we'll learn when, yes, but it's much, much more scarce times than uh, freely to use the going to do all kinds of things for us. Turn on this light. Uh, again, even if we don't tell him to, he turns on a light, he turns on the uh, air conditioning, he turn, yeah, the plata is off, all kinds of things like that. It's not simple to help to use the help of a guy. Definitely not when you're, done, when you're doing something totally for you and you're benefiting from the action. Okay. Um, so now, talking about a Shabbos elevator, Shabbos elevator, the idea behind the Shabbos elevator is two things. A, automatic, it goes automatically up and down. You don't press any button, you don't do anything. B, it's supposed to also have some type of technological uh, uh, technique which totally eliminates your weight from, from up or down. It doesn't take into consideration any weight of any human being in the elevator. How do they do that? They add, that's why a Shabbos elevator is not enough. If someone tells you, yeah, this is a Shabbos elevator, it goes up automatically. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. You need to have a cash supervision on it from a from an institute that takes care of technology and halacha, like Machon Tzomet or Machon HaTorah What's it called? Halprin was the head of it. Technology al Torah. The different institutions that take care of these things, they have to have, it has to have supervision because they also, what they do is they add weights to the elevator that make it so heavy that Nothing matters. It doesn't matter how many people are inside or out of the elevator, up or, up or down. It's so heavy on its own that it makes no difference anymore. Except That's the, like idea. the heaviest, not the like maximum. Exactly. So it makes no difference, right? of, yeah. of holding on itself, right? right. Having to lift up itself. Right. They add weights, actual weights. That don't come with a normal elevator. What do you mean? It's they, only... they come every Shabbat? Or they have no, no, no. Exercise. It's connected all the time. <clears throat> I guess when they switch it to Shabbos mode, I don't know how it works really that it gets somehow connected to these weights. I don't know how that works. Whatever, not to not to not to not to be informed. Like, oh, we have a shop that doesn't necessarily doesn't mean that it's kosher. Correct, correct. It's very deceiving. You have to make sure salvators some shabbos have, have this uh, kashrus uh, uh, sticker on them. It was inspected by Machon Tzomet. Yeah, there are such things. Never seen. Probably the also, they would have it correct. Correct, that's true too. I see sometimes stickers that say Machon Tzomet has checked this elevator and it's kosher to use on Shabbat. Have you seen some stickers? Right, there's all yellow, these yellow stickers. Right, it's extra buttons, right. Yeah. Hotels should definitely have such a sticker because if so many guests, they don't want people to all the time ask them the questions. So they stick it on the, on the hotel, on the uh, elevator in the hotel. Anyhow, so that's something to be aware of. Um, otherwise, it cannot really be used easily. The only way to use a Shabbos server, again, only going up and not down, a non-Shabbos server, sorry, going up and down, is with a goy who anyway is going up or down for himself, for his own use. And even then, it's only going up is okay, going down is not. So that's what you should uh, be aware of. Okay. Um, next topic. <coughs> okay, this topic we'll have to do a little bit. Uh, I think we haven't done this well thoroughly, so we'll elaborate over it now. And that is um, prolonging or shortening a Shabbos clock that's meant to turn on or off lights, ACs, plata, all that. You have these small Shabbos clocks that connect to the socket, you push it in. When we're talking about a case where it's all functioning, it's all working, the, the, the hours are correctly, the pegs are in place, everything's okay. Now, during Shabbat, suddenly you want to change the timing of the Shabbat clock. First of all, you should know, to begin with, to use a Shabbos clock, 
that's a big that's a big leniency in its own because they're Moshe Feinstein way way back in the fifties maybe when the when they first started coming out out with this idea, with this mechanism of, of, of Shabbos clock the lights for you see whatever it is he thought it should not be permitted to use it all on Shabbat even if he said everything before Shabbat it has it should not be used at all how come because he connected this to there's a concept in the Gemara called Avshamilta, that when something in the Gemara it has to do with sound. When something makes a sound, a, a, a loud sound, noise, when it works, so the Gemara says in Shabbos Yud Chet 18, that even if you've set it to work before Shabbat, and it's running automatically from Friday afternoon into Shabbat, but it makes noise, you mustn't allow you must allow it to function on Shabbat. You know, you do nothing on, you're doing nothing on Shabbat. You're doing no malah. Because people hear it working, and then they say to themselves, wait, this family is violating Shabbat. They turned something on on Shabbat. They won't realize that it was turned on from before. So in the Gemara's days, of course, no electricity. We're talking about the situation like Reichaim, where they used to have uh, a stone mill that water, used to gush towards the uh, stone or towards a, 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 a wooden uh, beam that stuck in the stone. And then it used to grind, it used to grind <coughs> wheat into flour by the water gushing with strong, uh, flow, strong flow to these mill, to, to the mill, and then it used to Circle the uh, surround the uh, stones uh, to grind the um, wheat. So anyhow, uh, this made a lot of noise. This made a lot of noise because the water was gushing all, all the time, and the and the mill, the, the the stone, heavy stone, when it's when it went when it went around in circles, it made a lot of noise. So even though you had nothing to do with it during Shabbat, it was all started from before. It all started from before Shabbat, but people may think that. You get the whole situation to work on Shabbat. That's all that. So says the Moshe Feinstein, in his opinion, same should be true for a Shabbos clock, a Shabbos timer. You set it before Shabbat. Suddenly, 10 o'clock in the evening, the lights go off. Someone sees from outdoors, lights going off. What do they think? This guy turned off the lights. And suddenly they go on Shabbos afternoon. So people will think, wow, someone just put it on. So Moshe had an issue with noise, but things that turn on visibly, you see them turning on or off. He had a problem with using them altogether. But in his tshuva about this, in his response about this issue, he writes, what can I do? The, 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 the uh, public, the, the masses, have okay. outdone me. Yeah, outdone the alacha. And they've spoken, right. They've spoken, and uh, they're, using, they're using the Shabbos timers, but I can't help it anymore. So at least he, what he did write there in the Shuba that we should minimize the amount of electrical appliances that we connect to, time, to timers, only to what we must, must, must use, nothing further. So for lights, yes. For AC, yes. For plata, yes. <coughs> but, or for example, today there's also uh, homes that have uh, electric uh, seam, uh, shades, blinds. They go up and down electronically. They also can set on a timer where towards the night goes down and in the morning goes up automatically. So even that, the post scheme allow in our days because it's becoming very common. The idea is anything that's more and more commonly used, people realize that it's set on the Shabbos timer and not turned on uh, manually on Shabbat. So these are things, yes. But for example, uh, I, was once, I was once asked uh, a few years ago, uh, like babies have, uh, or little kids have a uh, seesaw, like in the nida, a swing, a swing. So some of them are manual. You, you, you have to turn around the lever that makes it go for a while, and then it stops, and you go, turn it again. So that's okay on Shabbat. You can turn those on Shabbat. But they have some that are now electronically based, uh, electricity based. It's, plug it, it goes into a plug, and then it starts swinging on its own, until you shut it off. So someone, someone asked me if they're allowed to put on a timer so that 
if an hour here, an hour there, half an hour here, half an hour there, the swoon will go and then the <coughs> rock the baby. So I said, no, that's not something commonly used on a timer. And we go back to Rebosh's discussion that we should be as minimal, minimally as possible using Shabbos timers. So that not. What about a burglar alarm? A burglar alarm? Yeah, the light. Like- Ah, uh, yes. That, run upstairs at like midnight. Yeah, right, because it's going to turn on and then they're going to start working. Activated. Right, activated. Yeah, that's okay too because so many people have that. It's right. very, very common. Plus, I'd say another thing there. There, it's much more lenient altogether because you can't detect anything that, got, that goes on or off. It's just, it's just like the sort of the, uh, uh, I don't know, the sensors, sensors right, which are electronically based and yeah. you can't see anything visibly that gets turned on or off. So, so that's not what Moshe was afraid of, uh, was concerned of. He was concerned of something that we see visibly happening suddenly mm-hmm. on Shabbat. Like the swing suddenly starts rocking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's problematic. Um, there may be some other examples of, of, of that type that aren't commonly done, so we should not use. So that's in general. But now that we do use timers for all kinds of things that are commonly used. So if during Shabbat, you would like to change the setting of the pegs so that it gets turned on and turned off at different hours that we had thought to begin with, that we would need the light or the AC or, or anything or the plot or whatever it is. So the general rule is that Tov has Shabbat now, not Yom Tov. Yom Tov is a whole other discussion, but Tov has Shabbat now. On Shabbat, we can always prolong the current situation. But you'll soon see that it's not exactly Dafka current. You'll soon see how this works uh, in, in, in a greater way. But firstly, if right now, for example, the lights are on, let's say it's Shabbos uh, Friday night. Friday night, the lights are on, and it's uh, nearing 11. And you had thought before Shabbat to set the lights to 11 o'clock at night. You thought that would be enough. And you see your guests are staying on and on, getting close to 11. You know what? To feel uncomfortable when the lights go off and your guests are still in the house, although that could be a nice hint <laughs> for them to get the message. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad time. But if you're enjoying uh, your guests, so you would like to prolong the uh, timer to let, have the lights shut off at 11.30 or 12. So that's not a problem. You're allowed to go over as long as we're talking about manual pegs and not, of course, anything electronic. You have to press electronic buttons to change the timing. That's not, not possible at all. So if you wanted to um, prolong your class at that time, but if you wanted to, let's say you realized you only made it come on at, a, at one, but you really wanted it to start at 12, so you can't do that. That's not it's possible. Making it earlier. Exactly. To start something earlier, you cannot. Or to have it go shut off earlier, you cannot. Let's say your podcast right, right. is going on till, till one, and you want it off by 12.30, you can't off, say that. Or if it's off and you set it for one, but really you realize you know it's going to be like whatever you want to make it till two, so you can prolong the not the off. Exactly, exactly. That's you, the main rule here. Yeah. If you realize on Friday night that you need it to stay on for longer, but it's currently off, are you allowed to extend what will happen the following day? Oh, that's that's exactly the extension I want to do now. Okay. I was going to speak about that exactly. So what happens if right now, let's say the the light or plata is on? Okay, right now it's on. It's set to go off in an hour, let's say, and then back on again in five hours for another two hours. Let's say for Sudash, you want it back on again to warm up some food for Sudash Lishi. But now you realize while it's on in the morning, it's on in the morning, you realize that it's going to turn on for Sudash Lishi too late. You want it to turn on earlier than what you had planned for it to turn on. So had it been off right now, between the two pseudo, then you can't do anything about it. We said you can't just make something turn on earlier than what it should. But since it's on right now in the morning, at 10 o'clock in the morning, the plata is on. And then you realize that it's going to turn back on after turning off at uh, 5 in the afternoon, and you, th- and you think it's too late. You need it at 4.30. So you're allowed, you're allowed to set it earlier, to turn on earlier, later on in the afternoon because it's from on to on. Right now it's on at 10 o'clock. So it's as if it's extending the on situation. You can't make it now at 10, turn off earlier than it should 
have afternoon or now in the morning because that's again opposite of what it's now. But if it's on now, I make it turn on earlier later on. You're allowed. What's that's a very big finish. Okay, on Yom Tov, yeah, and that is one different rule than all this we said now. But let me just finish finish one more example of this sort, <coughs> the opposite direction. If now the Latar is is off right now, let's say between uh, morning meal and afternoon meal, the Latar is off now. Okay, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, it's off. Now you see that it's going to turn on at five or four in the afternoon, but it's going to be for, it's going to be for too long. You need it to just for an hour. It's going to be on for two hours. You're allowed to shorten, shorten now that it's off, make it turn off earlier, because again, it's from off to off. Even though in between, it's going to turn on. That's all. That's a very very important leniency here. Shlomo Zavin says this, and it's quoted in the Shemir Shabbos Kiv Chasa, so it's definitely very reliable. But this is allowed. People don't know this. Many people know that. But I've extended the current situation from off. Uh, you can prolong the time that it's going to stay off, or on, you can prolong the time it's going to stay so on. Friday night it's off, and then for Shabbat day, you realize you want to turn it off. You want to make it shorter. You turn it on too long. Right. You want to make it shorter. So you, You're allowed to make it shorter it Friday night while it's off. But that exactly. probably isn't the biggest concern. I would imagine, okay, so you waste an hour of electricity. I would imagine more of a concern is. Making it on earlier. Yeah, so you basically have to wait. Let's say if I realize on Friday night, oh my gosh, people are going to be here for longer. I need to have it on longer. So I have to wait till it is actually on, and then I can extend it on. Ah. That's my, that was my question. Like, oh, that was so if question. I go to bed no. on Friday night and I realize, oh, oh, you know, for whatever reason, everyone's going to come an hour later. Uh -huh. So it so might. You need to stay on for I an hour to, more. Yeah, I need to stay on for you an hour. You don't need more. to wait. No, you don't need to wait till it goes on. Okay. No, because. That's really extending, even though it's off right now, yeah. when it will turn on, yeah. you're extending the time that it's on. That's also okay. While it's off now, you can extend the time that it's going to be on. Okay. Because you're now really changing the situation because it's from on to on. When it's going to turn on, it's going to continue. Okay. So that's also okay. You don't need to wait till it goes on. You can't bring it. Right. The, 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 yeah, what you said before is that all you want to gain is some electricity. That's not always the reason for plant, at least, that people want to make it shorter if they right. don't need it that long, because it keeps the house too very warm and you don't right. need that warm. Right. That's also another reason. Right. It could be helpful that you shorten the time that it's up. Okay, because really for electricity reason, post can say better not touch the pegs, mm -hmm. even if it's extending the off or the on situation, mm -hmm. because we, after all, Fiddling around with all this isn't the best because after all, there's the chazanish who holds that anything electricity concerned or regard anything electricity connected is deraita, deraita level according to chazanish. We don't hold by him, but still he was a great, great posek. And if we don't have to fill around with electricity, better not. To. So the post can say if it's only to gain some to save some a little bit of very minimal amount of money mm. for it not to be on for an extra hour, don't touch the, don't touch the pegs, not to at all. It only has to do with uh, continue working or make it turn on or turn off earlier. Okay, so that's that. Um, I was gonna, ah, so Yontov, so you asked about Yontov, right. Rachel asked about Yontov. Um, Yom Tov, there's one more leniency besides all that we said now, which is if on Shabbat it's permitted, Definitely on Yom Tov. So besides all we said now, on Yom Tov, Gram Hadlaka is allowed, or Gram Havara. What does that mean? On Yom Tov, you're allowed indirectly, when it's not immediate, you're allowed to have something turn on, turn on, even if it wasn't meant to, as early as you would like it. So again, if it's off now, and you want it to turn on earlier than it should have had you had it gone by plan, you're allowed to on Yom Tov as long as it's not going to turn out at this moment. Mm -hmm. That's called Gram Hav Ara. Mm -hmm. That's allowed. Right. That's one more leading to Yom Tov more than Shabbos that you mustn't do so. But again, just in order not to be, not to get confused and start doing this on Shabbat, so it's best even on Yom Tov to refrain. Only if you're really, really desperate. You're desperately, only then do Gram 
Aga. So basically, on Yom Tov, everything's allowed except making it come on right now. No, it, that too, but also they can go off earlier than it should. That you cannot. Let's say if it was going to go off in an, in an hour and you want to go off in half an hour, you can't make it go off early. If it's on now, if it's oh, on it's now, hard, yeah. even though it's not immediate, because gram kibui asu, gram kibui to make it go off, even if it's indirect, you mustn't. But to make it go on indirectly, not immediately, that's all. That's all. That's only one direction, and only Yom Tov and not Shabbat. Mm-hmm. So it's a little confusing. That's why I said yeah. better yet to stick to the rules of Shabbat all the way through, including Yom Tov. Unless you're really, really desperate, then you can use this. Okay. Ah, now, this is all. So this is all dealing with the pegs themselves and a time. What happens if you would prefer prefer just to unplug the plata? Let's say it's off. Of course, if it's on, you can't touch the plug because it's, you can turn it off. But if it's off right now, and instead, let's say you had thought you had planned to be home for Sudash Lishit and have the pata go on for that time. Turns out in the end, that on Shabbat, you're invited to go somewhere for Sudash Lishit. So you don't need the pata at all. So again, we said, if it's just for the sake of saving some money on electricity, better not to touch, don't touch. But if, let's say, you have to think of a reason why you would still want to disconnect the plant. Dangerous. Dangerous, okay, it feels dangerous. If you're not at home for those two hours, it's dangerous. By the way, I know of a person who's home, burnt down totally, Whole totally. family was killed except for the mom. Ah, right, that was, in, yeah. true, that was much worse. That was much worse. And that was a plata? That was the yeah. plata. The plata, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A sword, a shortage. Yeah. Uh, ketzer. There's ketzer. been many yeah, stories, yeah. by the right. way, in New York. I know, it's terrible, like terrible. That. In New York, especially because it's all Plata's wood. Really deep. It's all wood yeah. in New York. The homes are built of wood. Wood. Yeah. yeah. And that also, people dangerous. let the cords touch it and then it rubs, it burns oh, yeah, yeah. through the. Oh, it burns the cord. Oh, yeah, cord yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the like, wires are exposed. It's like, of really course, of so course. Safe. I know. I know There's right. supposed to be safe ones now, but I've never seen any. Like they're supposed, supposed to be, be like very safe. Ah, yes. Very safe. Ah, yeah. wow. I don't want to get it out and brag, but yeah. do you have it? No, but we have this hot peg that is it's sold to non-Jews. It was also yeah. a wedding present from us from okay. Harrods. It's very posh. It's the only wedding present I use like every week. And it's not like an Israeli hot plate, but it's like boiling, boiling hot. Like yeah. we always have to dump it a little bit. But then it should get hot. Which is like yeah. maximum. We have to like cover it. There's like a, a, a side bit that's like they call it extra hot uh-huh. it like warms the food it doesn't like really heat it up yeah and I, yeah I mean it's got like never, yeah, no, no. but it's not yeah. the same as like we've also got like occasionally like on Yom we've got lots of people so I bought an extra one here the Israeli that one hot it's, gets hot right like so the shyish yeah. is, is is hot, hot. underneath yeah. this is like a different kind of I don't know I feel like mechanism it's, I feel like it's like but it doesn't mean by the way that it, that, it, that it works that it's safer. It doesn't mean that it's safer because it's still working on electricity. Right. It's never shorted. So. And, right. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's safer. We we actually had to chuck out our urn because the plug was melting both the plug in the, the socket mm-hmm. and the plug were melting. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like, it, yeah. Keep it's checking cool. these things. <laughs> An urn, which yeah. is obviously on the whole entire Shabbat from right. the day from the beginning till the end. Right. So we just replaced, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. have to keep an eye. Is it the socket problem? Was it the urn's problem? Like to right. make sure that right. nothing sparks. Yeah, and urn also has water involved. The water and electricity together, very dangerous also. So yeah, these things that are very careful. Okay, but getting back, so you're going right. out and you want okay. to Okay, so you want to this right, unplug. Not only do you want, oh, so now you could just do the pegs uh, technique by just Shutting it all off when it's off now, prolonging the off situation, and you're fine. But for some reason, you prefer unplugging the plata while it's off. So from the Chrissy point of view, no problem. You're not doing anything wrong. But the plug itself is muktzeh. That's the problem. Why is it muktzeh? Because, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so why is it muktzeh? Because it's used only for on and off, which is not allowed to do, you're not allowed to do such a thing on Shabbat, so it's a muktzayim. Um, so the way to get it out, uh, you could try 
try with your with the backs of your hand, but that doesn't work too well. It's quite firm. Uh, that you want to have the strength to get it out that way. So <laughs> the way Pilbaka uh, in the book discuss uh, says to maybe try to do it um, is. Uh, let's see right now in front of me, for some reason, but maybe in some other section here. He says, try to use your teeth, which yeah. is, uh, oh yeah. That's quite dangerous. That's, That's like because, right, it's like wet. Not a good idea. No, but you don't get close to the socket itself. You're pulling at the, at the plug by the external side of it, so it's far from the, so the socket. Yeah, or uh, <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult to do machinery. Um, no, what if you, you could maybe do, do, it to do it to do it like backwards or weird? No, with the hand, any time you use the palm of your hand, even if you're turning around your hand in a weird way, that's not called shimmy. Because after all, your hand is normally unplugging it. You're using your hand to unplug it normally, that's not enough. It has to be a very serious, like the backs of your hand. You pull it out of the backs of your hand, which is difficult. Anyway, if you can maneuver that way, it's okay. If not, then you can't really pull it out. There's one way for the Sephardim to, 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 to deal with all this, but it only works for them. <coughs> the Shulchan Aruch holds that if one conditions by, ahead of time for Shabbat that a certain object which will begin the Shabbat Muktza, but they condition it to be Muktza only at the time that it's functioning. And when it stops to work, it's going to be no longer Moktzeh. That's how the condition before Shabbat comes in. It works for them. because It, it, it unmuktzehizes the... When, when the Moktzeh is only due to the fact that it's used non-permissibly. If it's a... If it's, let's say it's a leaf. So you can't make this condition that during Shabbat, the leaf will not be Moktzeh. It's impossible because it's inherently Moktzeh by, by, by essence. Here, it's only due to the fact that this plug was used in an unpermissible way because it turned on the plata. So if it's due to that, you can demuxicize it before Shabbat by conditioning that when it stops working, it's no longer going to be moxed. But only the Sephardim can, can use this halachic uh, conditioning on, on, on such a type of moxed object to make it not moxed. Ashkenazim don't have this. Uh, we can see that Rama argues that it doesn't work. Okay, um, we'll continue now. Um, ah, yes, this is interesting. Speaking about an urn, speaking about an urn, I see the one more minute left. So, okay, let's do this one and then uh, continue. We're almost done with this chapter. Uh, soon by next time we should be done, hopefully with this chapter. So one more case about the urn. An urn, some of them have twofold situations. One is to, when you put it before Shabbat, put it in water before Shabbat, and you turn it on uh, and it boils the water. And then you have to remember before Shabbat to switch it to Shabbos mode. The urn, otherwise, continue bubbling, 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 and you waste all the water. By the way, most of them today. What do you mean, does that? I turn, I turn on boil it, and then it just flicks on to Shabbat. You serious? After it's boiled. Yeah. Oh, that's a new one. That, that's a more modern no, one. No, no, no. No, there's something you have one to do manually. Panic or Shabbat. Oh, right. Did you do the, it's just going right. to boil away in five minutes. Right, right, right. Now, by the way, they do have today, most, most of the new ones have a mechanism that if it boils out all the water, right, evaporates, and it, then, then it shuts itself off. Right. So it won't cause a fire yeah, and burn the whole house. In the morning, you're not going to have your coffee, right? But at least, not, at least the house is going to be still standing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's uh, if you forgot. But there are there are uh, urns that have a threefold uh, possibility. One is hartacha boiling. The other is Shabbos mode. But there's also what's called shmirat chot, that it keeps the water warm, meaning that. Is when you start taking, uh, when it starts cooling off a little bit, then it starts working suddenly. Mm -hmm. That's what's up, Shmirat Chol. Shabbos mode, what's the difference between that and Shabbos mode? Shabbos mode means that every few hours, it's going to boil the water, it's going to turn on and boil the water, no matter what the temperature of the water is currently. That's Shabbos mode. Shmirat 
Chom, just keeps it warm, means that it's always uh, uh, measuring. Right. It's finally measuring what the temperature what is the and the moment it needs to, the thermostat, exactly. Right. right. It works on the thermostat, that's Shmirat Chom. The moment it goes below a certain temperature, then it starts working. Now that you mustn't use on Shabbat because anytime you take out a cup of, of boiling water, it's now going to affect <coughs> the time, the timing of when the thermostat will feel it needs to reheat the water. So you have to make sure it's on Shabbos mode and not on thermostat situation. Although, although, um, if, you, if you're stuck because you forgot to turn to Shabbos mode and it's on, it's on Shmirat Chom, it's on this thermostat situation, since it's not going to happen immediately, when you take out a cup of water, when you use a cup for yourself, it's not going to immediately activate the heating system of the urn. It's going to happen a few minutes later when it detects that the water is too cool. So it's grama, it's indirect, and it's secretion, meaning my action of taking out water had nothing to do with activating the heating system of the urn. It's just that it will definitely happen and earlier than it should have because I took out some of the water. That's something that's called grama mipsikresha. The combination of these two together, Shlomo Zabin allowed action. He allowed this to happen on Shabbat because it's not immediate and it's not at all your intention to make, some, to make the urn work. It just works on its own because it measures the temperature and it decides it has to work. So no intention, even if secretion has to happen, we have no intention for it happen. And it's indirect because it's not immediate. All that put together, he allows. So is that so. how you can use a refrigerator? <coughs> exactly. Without Shabbat mode? Exactly. Exactly. That's how you can use a refrigerator without a Shabbat mode. Although in our days, the refrigerator is so, is so modern and advanced that the moment you open the door of the refrigerator, kicks it on. Yeah. right, it kicks it on, or at least it immediately starts measuring the temperature and there's a computerized system in there and it's all working. Because yeah, when the kids leave the door open for too long, it's up here. You notice that. Not so that, that would be okay because it would start, it's delayed. It's delayed. Uh -huh. it's delayed. But we're talking about the modern ones, right. which activates a lot of stuff immediately right. when you open the door. Right. At least the computer starts mm -hmm. calculating things. The door is open and starts immediately functioning in a way. So those are problematic because that's not grammar, that's immediate. So the modern refrigerators must have Shabbos mode to them. You have to buy, nowadays, you must buy a refrigerator with Shabbos mode. Otherwise, even if you detach, disconnect the light, it doesn't turn out the light or off, and uh, you don't see the motor working immediately, but in modern day refrigerators, something does start working immediately. Something gets activated. So you have to have a Shabbos mode. But back in the day, when there used to be much less sophisticated refrigerators, it just had a motor with a thermostat and just cooled the air when it was too hot, warm inside, that was not allowed using, even if now the motor is off, and when you open the door of the refrigerator, it's going to get, get some more warm air into it, and it's going to definitely turn on the motor earlier than it should have had you not opened the door. He still had opening the door of such a refrigerator back in the day because it's ground secretion. Exactly. That's the... Uh, you detected the exact uh, example for that. But nowadays, the refrigerator is much more sophisticated, so you must have a Shabbos mode. But the urn, the urn can still be used. By the way, that's why you're allowed to drink from a cooler on Shabbat. The cooler also has the same system. After a while, it starts working the motor to cool the water. And when you use some of the water, you may need to do it earlier than it would have if you hadn't used it. Still, it's okay because it's going to be delayed. And there's not no sophisticated, usually the, the uh, coolers aren't so sophisticated. Like with the water fountain that has exactly. Well, no. What about the Tammy Paul kind of oh, a situation? Can. Can. What's that? What about Tammy Paul kind of a situation? Tammy Arba. Right, that's Because it's a water cooler. So you can no, use it on Shabbat? You can use it on Shabbat, yes. But there are other things with the Tammy that the cooler what? takes the screen activates like a graphic. Oh, no, that's a problem. Right. Oh, okay. So it, the problem is in the screen rather than in the actual mechanism right. of the. That's yeah, the largest okay. net. There's a screen there that turns that goes turns on. If you're able to shut that off, that it shouldn't turn on, then you can use the actual timeout itself. 
or cold and hot water. The problem with the cold water dafka in the Tommy Force uh, uh, machine is not the, activa the activating of the motor or anything of that sort, like we said now, because it's ground psikresha. The problem with it is borer. We won't go into it now because it's a whole chapter dealing with the borer. It's the fact that you're separating uh, or sifting, sifting the water. Uh, we don't see it when we use the time before, but under the sink, <coughs> there's a whole mechanism of, 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 of sifting from the dirt from, from the water. But and I thought because it's so molecular that it's not a problem. You're right, you're right. You're Just right. like with fil Brita filters and things like that, you can use on right. Shabbat. Brita, you're right, is on Shabbat. Even our regular faucets have a net at the very tip of the faucet that accumulates dirt uh, that's in the water. But those are, you're right, so molecular that, that not, that's not going to bore it. The problem with the Tommy 4 system is that, uh, again, it's still complicated, so we'll do, I'll just say it in, in, in a nutshell, is that the um, sifting uh, mechanism, what it does is, it, there's a, a fog, a sponge type looking thing. It looks like a sponge where all the water coming from the area accumulates near that sponge on one side. And when you turn on the water, some more water comes in to the system and it pushes the water through the sponge area and then it gets sifted, then it gets uh, cleaned out. The problem is that after several months of use, if you don't switch the, the sponges, which you should, it says in the instructions once every three months to switch them. But if, if you don't, and most of us don't uh, in three months, we may do it once a year, but in three months not. So accumulate so much dirt on the, on, on, on the left side of it, sort of the side where it comes into, that the water that's sitting nearby and waiting to be pushed through in order to be drunken when you take a cup of water, the water gets so filthy that it's totally visible. If you open the system underneath your uh, sink, you'll see that the water is yellow. You would never drink that water. But it gets sifted by, the, by these uh, sponges and then it becomes crystal clear and it's totally edible and drinkable. So that's the, that's the problem because then that's real visible dirt that's in the water. And you're by turning on the cold water to use the cold water from the time before, you're actually pushing it through these sponges and cleaning the water from visible dirt. And that's boring. This is something that Firmaka came up with a few years ago and everyone went crazy because everyone was using their cold water time before system machines, they were using it freely and came up with this problem. And he said he has checked hundreds of machines all over the country to see if it's true. And he found they all, had all had it, they all had it. Unless you switch your sponge every three months, like, like a yakka, like a yakka. Otherwise it's, it's, it's dirty. So <clears throat> that's a problem to use the cold water of time before. There is a way, since he brought this up a few years ago, the companies have made two ways of getting around the system. Uh, so again, we'll go into it right now, but if you buy one, you should ask for a special Shabbos mechanism to your, for your time before. The, the, some companies have it, and it works in two ways. We won't explain right now, it's way over time. Uh, I'll keep it for some other time, but uh, there is a way to get around it, but you can't use normally, uh, you can't use it normally, regularly on Shabbat, the cold water, after the hot water, you can. Because the hot water it doesn't get sifted, it just lies in there for a seven liter or four liter, depending on the size you've got. And you just, and, and no new water comes into the system, of course, because otherwise, otherwise it's cooking. So no new water comes in. It's just like an urn, really. For hot water, is like an urn, that's no problem to use. That's not a problem. The cold water is definitely the problem because of this sifting issue, the boring. Okay, so that's it for, night about to share next week again and whoever can make it in person that would be better and i understand or maybe switching homes uh, maybe um, I'll, I'll speak to laura and, and we'll, we'll i'll okay. update everybody on the group thank okay. you thank very you very, very much, much. Rabbi.
Shabbat shalom. Hi, everybody. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>